when uh, transporting the scanner between operatories, I do use uh, their um, uh, lid from, uh, from the box and place everything inside because I don't want to drop anything. So it's, uh, it's good to transport this uh, scanner and the cording parts uh, in uh, some enclosed compartment between, uh, between spaces so that you don't drop them or hit them. Now before starting to use the scanner you're actually going to need to remove the lid of the scanner and place a tip. And as you can see on the right, tips uh, can be used um, with a uh, uh, mirror facing down or up as uh, you want to, they have a 180 degrees reversible tips. This uh, you should remember because it helps you when scanning the upper or lower arch. And um, when you get tips, uh, the first thing you do is going to, uh, you're going to uh, sterilize these tips before using in patients. And what I do in this regards, I use uh, the proper uh, solutions described by Medit. And after I uh, wipe this clean, these tips clean, I'm gonna dry them with uh, sterile gorges and also place a sterile pellet inside the tip after I wipe the mirror clean because when placing these tips in pouches, in sterilization pouches, uh, they can get uh, little stains on them and that stains are going to be a problem when scanning them because they can induce errors or um, they are going to stop the, the scanning process. So uh, you are going to receive tips in the I-600 uh, that are around uh, 100 sterilizations possible and in the I-700 and 700 wireless they can be sterilized 150 times and um, you can see here below how they can be sterilized with uh, gravity types or pre-vacuum types, autoclaves or uh, um, at uh, 121 degrees or 134 degrees and how much time you need. So please do respect these uh, specifications for proper sterilization. Uh, do not overuse tips because if a tip is too scratched or too uh, stained, the scanning is going to be impacted and you are going to um, have errors in your scans. Okay, after you have um, placed the tip on the scanner, now it's time to connect the scanner to the computer. And to connect the scanner to the computer, we we'll need uh, to connect it uh, to either USB-A or USB-C port. USB-A ports are uh, not delivering enough power or power at all to the scanner or to the scanner base so that it can work properly. So, if you are going to use a laptop with only USB-A 3.0, you will be needing also to plug uh, the scanner in or the base in and plug it into a wall socket because power is going to come from the socket and uh, information is going to flow to the USB-A cable. On the other hand, if you are using a USB-C cable, USB-C cables are providing uh, the needed power for um, the scanners to work properly, as you can see on the right. Uh, the only little disadvantage for the USB-C cables is that they provide sometimes power a little slower than a socket connection. And so when the scanner needs to warm up, it's going to take a little bit more time. But uh, there is a, this USB-C connection is a much simpler connection and it avoids using a lot of cables. So I prefer it um, over the other connections. Do remember that USB-C can be USB-C um, 3.2 or a USB-C Thunderbolt. Uh, Thunderbolts are operating at a higher speed than USB-C um, 3.2. So if you have one, please connect the scanner to the USB-C Thunderbolt connection. Once the scanner is connected to the laptop, for the first time it's going to go online and uh, bring you the activation key for the scanner. So bear in mind that uh, when you want to uh, first use a scanner, your laptop is going to be uh, able to connect to the internet. After this, you are going to have uh, little symbols on the lower left part of the screen that are going to tell the story of the connection. Uh, if uh, you can see a red dot there, the scanner is disconnected. If you connect the scanner and everything is uh, working fine, it's going to uh, turn out green, as you also can see there. So it's going to tell you if the scanner is connected, if the scanner is sleeping, if the hub is pairing, if you're using a wireless scanner, or 
if only the hub is connected. Also for the wireless scanners you will see the percentage of the battery left uh, for, that, uh, for that scanner. Uh, when you are going close to 20% I would recommend to swap the batteries and um, to give a new battery because you won't want to uh, stop scanning and replace it mid-scan. And um, <coughs> please uh, watch these uh, symbols on the lower left to understand what is happening with your device. One thing worth mentioning is that if you are using uh, i700 wireless, wireless, it takes um, a, new, uh, a new antenna into account that is the actual hub. This antenna needs to face the scanner with um, a straight part towards the scanner uh, and it needs to not have any obstructions. So please try to place the antenna towards the chair and the patient sitting there so that you can use the um, scanner at its fullest potential and not have any interruptions during scanning. Also, for any scanner from Medit, my recommendation to you would be to um, place the laptop at such an angle that you will always be able to see uh, not only the patient but also the laptop screen. I don't like scanning and all, uh, only hearing the sound uh, that the scanner makes because as you can uh, already know when uh, you scan you hear uh, a music that you can uh, change if you don't like the music from Medit but anyhow you're gonna uh, hear sound and the sound is going to have um, uh, a wider, bigger volume if you scan correctly and if the scanner is actually getting information and it's going to reduce that sound if uh, this, um, uh, if your scanner is not getting any information but it is not enough to know where you are and if you are doing the right thing while, while scanning so please place your laptop so that it faces uh, the um, uh, so that it faces uh, you while scanning so you can watch what you are doing inside the mouth of the patient but also what is happening on the screen. Okay, for the i700 wireless that uses batteries you have to know that uh, your scanner comes with three batteries included. They can be operated at around one hour so uh, it should last, one battery should last to, uh, to, um, for one hour of use uh, mostly uh, you should scan two or three cases with one batteries. Uh, standby mode is eight hours per battery and you need to charge it for at least 2.5 to 3 hours to get a full charge out of them. Uh, my work protocol is to uh, use the battery and um, when I see that I'm going to 20, as I mentioned before, I'm going to replace the battery. When I already uh, used the second battery in my pack, I have to go and plug them in to get them charged because the last battery could uh, be drained in one hour and uh, the other two ones need to be charged for 2.5 to 3 hours so even sometimes I, if I know I, uh, I have a full day of scanning if I use a battery I already put it to charge back in the, in the cradle if by any reason you have forgotten to charge your batteries do not worry because the box in uh, that you find the i700 wireless contains a wired cabled battery it's a replacement and if you plug that into the scanner it's just going to uh, use the scanner connected to the socket and it's not going to be any problem to scan even if you don't have the batteries at the ready uh, that bad plugged in battery is not a replacement and not a wired connection to the scanner it just gives juice to the scanner so you still will have to uh, be able to uh, connect to the base and the base is still needed. As you see, the charger symbols are displayed, uh, displayed below and you also know, as I mentioned before, how much uh, juice you have left in your batteries, so take that into account. Before doing your first scan, your scanner needs to be calibrated. Um, the good part about calibration is that once done, you have uh, the information done by the calibration inside the scanner and uh, not the laptop. So once you have calibrated the device, you will be able to use it uh, on any laptop. You don't need to calibrate for the, every laptop or desktop that you are using. But with that said, calibration is very, very important to get consistent results and get a very precise scan. What I commonly do is calibrate my device every two weeks 
as you can see in the in the protocol by placing the calibrating tool uh, instead of the scanning tip on the scanner the calibration wizard starts automatically you're going to go to all the steps from uh, and the, the calibration wizard is very simple you're going to go to all the steps and to all positions from one to the last and afterwards the, uh, the scanner and the software together will uh, calculate the values and give the calibration file uh, that is going to be auto stored on the scanner so no need to worry you don't need to do anything just go to the steps of the wizard but with that said uh, i calibrate my scanner every two weeks two weeks and also anytime i do something uh, uh, of a bigger case of a case that needs to have very good precision so full large cases i always calibrate before uh, anything that is more than two implants for from three implants and up i always calibrate before doing the impressions and uh, also you are going to get a pop-up message sometimes uh, telling you that the scanner is not warm enough this is very important that because uh, physical objects have dimensions varying uh, by their temperatures. Let the scanner heat accordingly before using it for calibration, but also for general use. Never start scanning if the scanner is not warm enough. Let it let it do its thing, and only after everything is warm enough and it's going to tell you that it's this is done. Only then can you start scanning. Also, as I mentioned in the previous slide, uh, this is what you are going to see on the left is uh, the temperature and the heating, the needed heating for the scanner when the gauge is to the right, everything is done. And then you are going to start from the position one and to the last. And then the calibration wizard is going to tell you that the calibration is a pass. Before you start your first scan, I want to mention that every scan is composed of multiple stages. And you can see uh, at the lower part of the screen, you can select, select multiple stages from pre-op maxilla to pre-op mandible, from maxilla and mandible scans operation stage and also uh, for scan body stages, for face scan, that symbol for the scan, face scan also stands for uh, a CT uh, load of um, the patient's DICOM files converted to an STL. Uh, but also in that stage, in the face scan and the uh, DICOM stage, you can also import any kind of STL you want or OBJ or any kind of file that you can use during your scan. And also you have the additional scan stage that lets you scan anything you want and then correct, correlate it to the case. But uh, the scanner gathers data during these processes, during these stages. And if anything happens to your laptop during these scan procedures, you might lose all your data. And if the scanner, if the laptop reboots, or uh, if you have a blue screen, or any kind of error, you can lose data. And for this not to happen, one of my most important advice to you before you start scanning, you are going to go on the upper left part of the screen and select settings and there you will select from program preferences automatic backup what this does is every time you change a stage you go from pre-op to op or from op to pre-op back or to occlusion or any stage the previous stage is automatically backed up in the hard disk and if the program crashes or you have any error when you are going to reopen the case the data from the previous stage is going to be there and you're not going to lose everything so mostly most of your data will be there to be even more safe what I do when I scan a stage uh, for example I, I had the pre-op and now I'm going to scan the op and the op I'm going to scan piece by piece for those guys that do this that have this protocol my suggestion to you is after scanning a part of uh, the operation stage and then going forward and then you are going to do some uh, uh, preparations on the teeth and then you are going to scan again, stop before you do anything. After you scan a part, stop, uh, go on the upper left and on the upper left you are going to find a save button. Press the save button and what this does is back up even the stage that you are working on directly on the hard disk. So now if anything fails and you are going to reopen the case, you are going to find your case exactly at the point that you have left it before. So no possibility to 
errors from now on or for, for crashes. Just remember every any time you do something and you want to make a break, to take a break, just go up there, save everything and then continue working and when you have any error you can uh, resume from that point on. Uh, as I just told you, on the upper left you have that save button. So remember to find it and press it. Now, after you have finished uh, scanning a patient, as uh, you can see on the left picture, uh, your unit, if it's i uh, i700 or an i700 wireless, has a sterilizing uh, light inside of it and you can see the symbol on, the, on uh, your scanner light up. You can set the amount of time that you want the scanner to sterilize itself on the inner part uh, in settings. But also, once this process starts, my recommendation to you is not turn the scanner off, just leave it uh, to sterilize its inner part because uh, this is how you get a uh, proper experience for the next patient. What happens is that the scanner has a fan inside that blows air through the scanner from the posterior part to the anterior to cool it off and because aerosols are present uh, in your operating room uh, it's going to um, go uh, to have these aerosols go to the scanners and they might infect the inner part of the scanner and uh, this uh, this little uh, droplets can then be uh, you know, ex be expunged to the next patient so for this not to happen the inside of the scanner is going to be sterilized by uv means but this is only uh, happening if you let the scanner on after scanning and after that uv led is going to uh, disconnect now you know that uh, the whole uv process is finalized also as you can see on the right the process of disinfecting the scanner by itself is done by spraying sterilization agent on a, a dry cloth and wiping the scanner off but never ever use a sterilizing agent sprayed directly on the scanner because it can get inside and it can damage your device so always spray the sterilizing agent on a cloth or, or on a piece of paper and just then wipe the scanner off.